Hi friends! In this video I'm going to talk about the icons of the status bar in AutoCAD. I'm going to explain them briefly one by one so you can have a general idea of what they do. So let's start! The first icon at the status bar is this one that says Model. What does it do? Basically, it's switching to the paper space once I click on it. The paper space are the layouts, or in other words, the sheets where we can print our projects. In this case, we have a layout for an A4 paper and a layout for an A3, which has the double size. Let's move on to the next icon, the grid. By clicking on it, I simply decide if I want to use the grid along with this file. Then we can switch on the snap mode if we want. Its function is snapping to the points on the grid while drawing objects. But be aware, the snap mode is only effective when we have the grid turned on as well. So, by working with both functions together, it can be great as a drafting technique. However, not everyone uses it and it's even not a requirement to master the program. Then, by clicking on this arrow, we can edit the settings of the grid and snap. I am not going through them in this video, but don't worry, as I have made an entire tutorial just for this topic. The next two icons are the Orso mode and the polar tracking. The Orso mode restricts the cursor horizontally and vertically when I'm drawing objects. And this is especially noticeable for lines, like what I'm doing now. If I turn on the polar tracking instead, I can draw the line in any direction, but it snaps to certain angles. By default, the angles are 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 and 270 degrees. But if these are not enough, there are options to snap to small angles. It's here on this list. Just choose the one that suits you better. The next button is for the isometric drafting. And to understand how it works, we are going to draw this simple cube which is represented as a 2D isometric projection. There are three different planes that we can work on. The left, right and top. And before starting, Let's switch on the grid and you can notice when I turn on the isometric drafting for the left plane, the cursor and the grid are automatically readjusted. And the same happens with the snap mode. And the orso mode. However, the polar tracking doesn't work for isometric drafting and that means you should be in the ortho mode to use this technique properly. Ok, let's make the cube. I start with the left plane and this time I'm going to switch on both the grid and the snap modes, even they are not required, to help you visualizing the drawing process. I'm going to start in a major intersection and then make the edges, each of them measuring 200 mm. So, when I'm done with this face, I change the plane to right and you can see how easily it's now to draw the right side. This time I switch off the snap mode because I don't need it anymore. And finally, I turn on the top plane to draw the remaining gadgets. Now you can start practicing ISO drafting in your projects. Now let's move to this group of two icons, the Auto Snap and Object Snap. Object Snap is one of the basic features in AutoCAD and we must have this button switched on to have the best accuracy in our drawings. What does it do? When using a drawing tool, the pointer snaps on specific points of objects, like this midpoint of a line, 
an end point, a center of a circle, etc. These points are called modes, and we can manage the active modes from this list. Additionally, you can open these settings in a window. If I switch off the object snap and turn on the drawing command, which can be the command line, look that the pointer no longer snaps to these points and I won't be able to draw with precision. With Auto Snap, also called Object Snap Tracking, a tracking line shows up in the screen to help me in the drawing process. If I turn it off, you can see that in this midpoint the tracking lines no longer appear. The next section is about the annotation scale, and you can find in the description of this video a full tutorial just about this topic. Now, in this drawing I have added annotative dimensions in different scales, 1 per 50, 1 per 10 and 1 per 2, so they appear in the viewport that has exactly the same scale. As at this moment the annotative scale is 1 per 1, no dimension lines are shown here. However, if I activate this button, all the dimension objects appear now in the workspace. Basically, when this icon is off, I can only see the annotation objects that match the current scale. The next icon adds scales to annotative objects when the annotation scale changes, has the following effect. If I change this scale, each dimension line was added to that scale and they will still appear if I change one of the viewports to the scale of 1 per 5. The gear here that looks like a settings menu is actually meant for switching the workspace. By default AutoCAD comes with three. The current one is drafting an annotation, which is used for drawing in 2D. Then we have two workspaces for 3D modeling. First, we have 3D basics. This one comes with simple commands in the panels for drawing 3D objects. And as you can notice, the buttons here are bigger than in the other panels. Finally, we have 3D modeling. And here, the panels and menus are more complex, with plenty of commands to model our projects. Then, if we are not happy with none of these workspaces, we can create a new one in Save Current As and then customize it here in this option. Finally, if we put a tick here, we can display the workspace name in the status bar. This button, which represents a square, a circle and triangle, is for isolating or hiding objects, and it's very simple to use. Let's start with isolate. Then I pick these two objects, press enter, and as you can notice, everything is hidden without this part. On the other hand, if I click on hide, I can hide some objects from the screen, and I'm doing it on these three ones as an example. To return to the normal state, I click on End Object Isolation and everything is shown again. Hide and Isolate can be especially useful when in a complex project I want, for example, to make some changes in this specific section. Here, I have decided to isolate this part and then hide the lines that I don't need. One last tip, alternatively I can access these options from the right click menu and it's exactly the same as what you can find on the status bar. The next icon is the Autodesk Trust DWG. This function analyzes if the current DWG file was last saved with an Autodesk product or by a software developer licensed to use the real Autodesk toolkit. If it matches this criteria, you will have a green tick here. 
If not, you get a warning instead of the tick and Autodesk cannot guarantee the application compatibility or integrity of the file. In other words, if you were working in a DWG file in a different CAD software, it may work properly here in AutoCAD, but it's not 100% guaranteed. The next button is called Clean Screen, and we just use it to switch to the full screen mode, like this. This can be useful if we want to work in a wider workspace. So click on it again to get to the previous state. Finally, we have customization. Here we can add or remove icons to the status bar as we wish. Some of those used to be included in the status bar by default in previous versions. And as an example, I'm going to add the dynamic input and you can see it appearing just before the Orsa mode. Also, have in mind that the tick doesn't mean the function is turned on. For curiosity, the dynamic input shows the input next to the cursor when I type anything with the keyboard, such as a command name, length, etc. And look that it's not showing it anymore when it's off. So it was everything for today. But this time before leaving, I want to mention that I just started a page of Patreon for Kelimpla. There you can support this channel to help me keep creating more content here. I would really appreciate that. Even of course, I'm already grateful that you find these videos available and that they are helping you to speed up your knowledge. Without your support, nothing of this would be possible. So, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.